So we're going to be talking with, oh my gosh, dude, I forgot your name. Yurai. Yurai. Okay, we're going to be talking with Yurai, who's going to be talking with us about Parallelipolis. That is so hard to say. The two L's are make it difficult to say for me to say, at least. Um, he's going to tell us what they do. It's really, really interesting. Um, I'm not going to spoil it. I, there's no spoilers. This is a spoiler-free stage. If you've seen the new Star Wars, please don't tell anybody about it. Um, and he he won't he won't spoil that either. I promise. Um, but the reviews have not. They've been very mediocre. Uh, so uh, let's go ahead and invite invite Yurai onto the stage. And I th yeah, I think we're all set up for him. Give him a hand. Thank you. Um, so, hello, we are from Parallelny Police. Um, oh, the slides now work. So, um, originally there was only Praha, but uh, last year we added Bratislava to the slides, and now um, the other ones don't fit on the sli slide, uh, so I, I will have to uh, tell you about them, the, the new ones like uh, Barcelona and Vienna. So, what is it? Uh, when you come to Prague, uh, it's a building that uh, quite nicely represents what the place is about. Um, there is a cafeteria, there is a co-working space, and there is a venue we call Institute of Cryptoanarchy, where uh, you can learn more. Uh, there are other parts to it, um, both uh, um, uh, physical in the space and also uh, virtual like the Hackers Congress which is um, our annual event uh, about crypto anarchy and it's um, um, one of the few uh, cypherpunk conferences out there. So uh, the, uh, I also didn't mention the crypto hacker space which is like a small hacker space where, where you can play with crypto. So first uh, this is the Prague space. What I really like about um, these communities, also Riyadh and um, other places, TAZ0 from uh, from Berlin, is that you can never um, explain what the what what is happening inside, what the projects are in uh, in any kind of short talk. So there are um, so many interesting things going on that you literally need to go there and spend a few months in each of these places in order to understand what these people are doing. Uh, I still haven't figured it out, so um, it's, uh, it's really interesting. So this is how the place in Prague looks like. Um, there are some uh, weird features such as 3D printed ashtrays and uh, uh, weird Creative Commons music that plays in the cafeteria in order to avoid uh, centralized intellectual property um, taxes, I would say. Uh, this is the Institute of Crypto Anarchy in Prague. Um, what uh, we do are, uh, is based on a few concepts. One of them is the Crypto Anarchy Manifesto, which is um, uh, um, a document from early 1990s and uh, um, it describes how you can uh, um, avoid being observed uh, on the internet and if uh, uh, if you cannot be observed or if you can if you are eventually observed um, how to make it difficult uh, for any outside attacker to see what is going on so that means encrypted uh, chat rooms, uh, mix nets, uh, digital money and so on. Um, what we wanted to try is to see if this idea on the internet can be implemented in a physical space in a, um, in a community. Uh, so uh, I'm not going to uh, talk about uh, particular projects uh, but I will um, tell you something about a few practical experiences. So there are, of course, interactions with the state, uh, for example, because of the boycott of um, electronic submission of transactions, which is a state surveillance system that collects data about the shopping behavior of all citizens. Uh, that's also in Czech Republic and also in Slovakia now. Um, so Paralpolis is one of the few places that doesn't uh, report this data to the government. Right now the Czech National Bank uh, said that they have the monopoly on the uh, word coin, so you can, or minca, 
so you cannot use this word uh, unless you have a stamp from Czech National Bank, which is also funny. Um, we are testing re real world usability of cryptocurrencies because you can only pay with cryptocurrencies in these spaces. We don't accept uh, state money. Um, in Bratislava, we started uh, deploying internal token for um, rewarding volunteers. So it's on internal network. Um, uh, and we are experimenting uh, about how to scale this concept in a decentralized way, but with, without losing the values. A few more pictures. This is, uh, uh, you can see uh, Lutska back there. Uh, she can pay um, uh, in the terminal uh, with her hand, with her chip implant. There are some more cyborgs that are able to pay with cryptocurrencies um, uh, by their implants. Um, uh, we would like to encourage uh, growth uh, and we believe that small scale is important. So this is how we scaled to Bratislava. Uh, just a few architectonical ideas and this is how the place looks now. It's also a cafeteria institute in the back. Um, so these places are growing um, and uh, I will just skip this part. Um, uh, what's next? Uh, I will talk about what's next also tomorrow at 6 p.m. in a more detailed fashion, what we are doing and what we are preparing to do. Uh, but I would like to mention this project, which is Decent Track, which is a mobile parallel police that can drive to a place where it's needed the most and uh, uh, supported by, by market forces, hopefully. <laughs> Um, and uh, it can uh, contain uh, um, a portable coffee machine like the one uh, that we have in the back where you can get coffee and so on. Um, and uh, we are now thinking about implementing uh, this idea uh, in a form of shipping containers. So uh, that's a brief overview and uh, tomorrow at 6 I will talk more in detail about what we are doing right now, uh, at least part of us. And I don't know if we have time for questions. Three minutes, okay. So if you have questions, we still have time for questions. Yes? How is the whole thing financed? Oh, okay, so financing is very diverse, I would say. Um, uh, we sell coffee and uh, hope to make profit on it. That doesn't work that ma that well. <laughs> um, we sell uh, spaces in uh, or seats in co-working space, um, entrance fee to some of the talks, crowdfunding. We have members that that pay membership fees. We have um, a board of directors who are more entrepreneurial, but people, not companies, who support us with more money. Um, and then the regular members, so they choose to contribute more money and less time, or in some cases both more money and more time. Um, uh, there's um, uh, various other ways, so the projects that we, uh, that we do, they s uh, often have this sustainability, uh, financial sustainability built in, so they can, uh, they can finance themselves. So for example, if we do t-shirts or if we try to do um, hydroponic, open source hydroponic systems like Parallel Garden tries to be all self-sustainable in, in a decentralized way. So w what I like to look at, uh, I like to look at it as a small virtual companies within the nonprofit that have their costs and uh, they try to generate some profit. But uh, it's very wild because we only use cryptocurrencies. That means that uh, also uh, it is much harder to do actual economic calculations because you're accounting in something that is very volatile. And we have found ways on how to do that and uh, how to not uh, go totally bust, uh, at least for now. Tomorrow might be a different day, but um, yeah. Um, any more questions or next speaker? Yeah. Thank you so much. Pretty interesting, huh? Pretty interesting. I, I went and visited them at their, their conference this past time. It's full of Bitcoin maximalists, but I, I forgive them for that. Uh, <laughs> uh, really cool place. Really cool place. Yes, Monero. That's, that's right. Monero is the way to be.